subscribe to M code and ring the notification bell to get the latest content. In the last lecture, we have built our first MapReduce job. So without further ado, let's jump on to executing that job and see it live in action. Okay, so as you can see, I have already kicked off my HTTP sandbox and you can see that all the services are running fine without any issues. So all I can see it as green text. So we are good to go now. So the first step is you have to download putty. So I hope you already downloaded it. So just click on the putty and here we need to give the host name. So the host name will be consist of a username at the rate and the host name. So basically we have the host name as Murray underscore dev. So which is the username at the rate the server name which is localhost. So you have to give localhost and the port is 2222. And you can definitely save that for easier access to this server. So I'll just go ahead and open it. So once we open, what you will find is it will ask for your credentials. So the credentials are nothing but what we have seen in logging into the Ambari UI. So which is Maria underscore dev. So once you log into the server, you can able to see the files. So if you hit LS, you are able to see the files, but for you, as you are just getting started, it will be empty. So we need to download these files first. But to able to do that, first we need to set up MR job and Python. Let's do that. So there are like simple steps we need to follow. So these are few commands that I have in this notepad. So I'll be sharing these as well in the description below so that we can just copy paste it and don't worry about it. So just the first one is we need to config the HDB solar of a version 2.6 because for to able to run MR job you need this so just go ahead and just run this command one by one without any hesitation so I'll just run this command and wait for it to complete so as you can see I got the permission denied error this is pretty expected because we have logged into the Maria underscore dev which is not the super user for this Unix machine so to able to do that, so you have to just log in as a super user. So the command for it is su space root, right? So this is the command and initially it will ask for the password, right? So initial password will be Hadoop all in the lower case. But once you did that, you have, it will, uh, it will prompt you to change the password. So just remember that password carefully because resetting and all will be very hassle just give like the password Hadoop. So in my case, I have already changed it to some other one. So I'll just give that. Okay, so once you're logging as a root user, just paste the command again and you will able to run that. So I just paste it. And as you can see, it has ran successfully. Also, you just have to continue with the process and run the next command here. So I'll just paste it over here. So depending upon the installation, it will take maybe two to three minutes to complete all this process. So again, you have to pip inst so you have to yum install the Python pip. So since the we need pip to install yamrjob, pyml, and everything, we are just going to use this yum install Python pip. So I'll just do that. And since many of these packages are already on my system, so it will not do anything much for me. So as you can see, it is just extracting the packages and it's doing all the installation stuff. So you can wait for it to complete. So once it is done, just run the path lib here. So we'll just pip install the path lib. Okay, so that is also done. And here we can run the MR job by ML and nano. Nano is just an editor that is an optional item. So you can install it if you need. So I'll just install the MR job first. So MR job is pretty important here. So as you can see for me, it is showing as requirements already satisfied because I already set it up for me. So for you, you may get some warning as well to install it, to get your confirmation. So you just have to put Y and go ahead with the installation. So the next one will be the PyML. So similarly, PyML is also satisfied. And also for me, it will be Nano Editor. Nano Editor is also uh, satisfied for me. So it will just complete it. And then we need our two files here. So the first file will be ratings.data where we have 
our movie ID and all the ratings it has. So to get that file, we need the wget command and we this is like the GitHub repository path to get this two files. So the first one, we will get the ratings.data. So you'll just copy and paste it over here. And once we enter it, okay, so that is done like very quick, right? Because it is not that big file. I know we are dealing with big data here, but this is just to demonstrate how MapReduce works under the hood. And also we need the top movies.py, which is, which is our Python script, which is giving us the most popular movies, right? So I'll just download that as well. So once we hit LS, you will able to find both these files present in your home directory. Since we are running all these commands from your home itself. So as we can see, we got the ratings.data present ratings.data present over here and we also have the top movies.py file so what are we waiting for there are two approaches to, to kick off this script one will be locally so that will just need the python command so you can give like python top movies.py and pass your file as an argument and the next one is we can also submit it to the cluster i know we only have one data node to the cluster but to make things interesting and get your better understanding, it will definitely kick off our job into cluster mode as well. So for these two commands, we have it over here. The first one is the Python command where we are getting the top movies.py and we are passing our data file as an argument. And the next one, we are passing few arguments like we are just submitting it to Hadoop and also we are giving some streaming jar files. So these files are already set up by Cloudera and these are present in this directory. So this is like user, SDP, current and we have the Hadoop streaming jar file and after that the next argument would be ratings.data. So for now since we have only one data node we will run that on our machine itself. So I'll just give it a python topmovies.py and the ratings.data file. Okay, so just all you have to do is just copy it and paste it in the command line. So it will kick off our job right now. Okay, so as you can see, it is running the step one of two. So as you can see, it is already completed. It was quite powerful and you will see the difference when we will deal with big data in future because this was pretty small file to be honest and it is not a big data and Hadoop cluster is only suitable for big data and will not perform well to process smaller files. But since we have the hardware limitation and we don't have an active cluster, we only have a cluster with a single data node. So that's why this is sufficient for your basic understanding. So as you can see, we got all the movie ratings along with their ratings. So the last one which has like the 164 ratings wins here and it has the movie id as 739 and this is a mystery right because we don't have the name for that movie it is present in another file and we can also discuss that in the upcoming lectures where the mystery will be resolved and this 739 number movie we will be able to identify from the other file where we will combine two files and see and do some analytics on top of it so I hope you understood how to run a MapReduce job on a Hadoop cluster. Okay, so that's it for today's lecture. I hope you understood about all the bits and pieces of Hadoop and their integral parts and how it works under the hood. And we also demonstrated and learned one example where we have ran a simple MapReduce job to get a popular movie from our data file. So I highly recommend you to go through it, try it on your own and maybe try some complex example if you understood it very well. So in the next lecture, let's start shifting our focus to the lightning tool of big data, which is Apache Spark. So we will be starting with the basics of Apache Spark and how it works under the hood and also run few examples to get you better understanding. So I'll see you in the next lecture. So that's it for today. I'll see you in the next lecture.